Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics and today it's that time of year again we're going to be doing a full fish room tour, but we're going to do it in two parts. Today we're going to do part one, we'll look at this side of the fish room and in the next video in a few days we'll go ahead and take a look at the other side of the fish room, so stay tuned. All right, everybody, so I figured we'd start on this side of the fish room where we've got the three tons. We've got four 20 longs along the right-hand side. We've got four 40-gallon breeders along the back. We've got a 50-gallon low boy in the center here, and underneath that, we've got four 20 highs. And then as we move to the left, we've got the two 75-gallons double stacked and the 125. What you can't see from this angle is right along on our right-hand side in the back, we've got a 23 gallon bow front, a 37 gallon, there's a 10 gallon also kind of behind us, and a 30 gallon fry bin. So we're gonna take you around the room, take a look at this, and then we'll venture over to the other side. All right, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start over here with these two tanks. All right, so this is a 23 gallon bow front. These are red zebra cichlids. These are fry from some of the parents and the 75 gallon Mbuna tank, which you will see shortly. There were more in here, but we got rid of some of them through the club auctions and swaps and we plan to probably get rid of the rest of them this season in the swap and auction season here so this tank will be freed up and these guys will move along really pretty fish they stay this color throughout their entire lives both males and females so it's kind of cool uh, even right from when they are born they are a nice beautiful bright orange so in this tank, we have our Species 35 tomato halves. We recently did a species profile on them. So if you wanna see more, learn more about them, check that out. Uh, in here, we've got at least two males and probably four females. We added this little plant just to kind of give them some more cover. The dominant male is probably in that cave right now. Uh, this is the subdominant male that we see here kind of by the entrance of the cave. And then we've got some females over here. Some of them are holding. Uh, I'll show you some babies in a moment, but uh, you can see here, these are the fish. Yeah, the male is in that cave. We'll try to come back when he is out and about. And there's the male. I figured I'd feed these guys and so you can kind of see the male. Really cool colors. All right, so now we will come along and we will look at the three 10 gallons that we have here. So these are the species 35 fry that we have in the top 10. We just saw the, the parents. So we've got, I don't know, about 15 or so in here. Again, a lot of these are going to be moving out to auction, so this tank will be freed up probably sometime this fall. So this tank houses our Dragon Blood Red Empress mix. We get a lot of Dragon Bloods, nice looking males, and then we also get some OB looking fish, which are also really cool. So lots of fish in here. We got some Java Moss in there as well, but these fish will also be moving out along with the fish above them when we start doing the swaps and auctions this fall and this spring. And this is always fun to watch as well. We just fed out a little bit of live baby brine and these young little dragon blood red empress mixes are going crazy super exciting time for them surrounded by their favorite food this bottom 10 gallon is our pride and joy mostly because of this giant algae ball no just kidding these fish are amazing these are geophagus wine milleri they're starting to grow a little bit larger they're starting to already get some color one of my all-time favorite geophagus these fish are going to require a much larger tank than a 10 gallon as they will grow to be about a foot long and be very majestic looking and so they're going to get their own tank here shortly but they're just kind of growing out in this 10 gallon and then pretty soon like i said we'll give them their own tank obviously they need some more space they're going to get it they're going to be awesome and i figured while we were down by the floor there, this is a very very temporary situation we've got some thrictis macula pinnis down here in a fish bowl waiting to get their turn in a 10 gallon which they're going to be moving really soon but Pretty cool that we got some fry. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at these 420 longs and some pretty cool fish. This is our super red bristlenose breeding tank. As you can see, lots of super red bristlenose. There are also some Neocaridina shrimp in here, some cherry shrimp, and a few other more wild type looking strains. But a lot of these fish are gonna be moving to the swaps and auctions this fall and spring. So this will be a much lighter stock tank in the next coming months but lots of super red bristlenose fry, pretty happy with those. And as we move from that tank right next door, we have our standard bristlenose breeding tanks, both albinos and browns. Not a lot going on here right now, but usually we get some fry from these guys, uh, maybe once every couple of months now. We need to kind of thin the herd out a little bit to increase the breeding, but, and it's also a tank where we get lots of jungle valve. This 20 long right above the bristlenose tanks is 
housing some peacock gudgeons. They are very shy fish. Somehow a guppy got in there. I have no idea how that happened. But this is a tank in transition. I think what we're gonna do with this tank is move a couple of pairs of peacock gudgeons out, see if we can't get them to breed. It's been a little while since we've had fry. And there's probably 20 of them stuck behind that sword plant. They didn't appreciate our recent re escaping or at least taking out a lot of the hornwort that was in this tank but this is a tank that will be used for something else in the relatively near future just because the peacock gudgeons haven't bred for us in a while it's not set up to breed right now we've got to, like i said move a couple into a 10 gallon and see if we can't get some eggs so this is the 20 gallon right next to the peacock gudgeon tank a uh, couple cool things the plants are really starting to grow in that's nice the crypts and the jungle valve in the back we have the brilliant green rasboras we have some guppies in here. The guppies were there really just to take care of some green hair algae issues that we had. And they have almost completely devoured it in this tank, which is pretty cool. Uh, the main fish in this tank are, is the fish that's looking right at you. And that is the Nanakara anomala. There is at least two males and two females in this tank. At least that's what I think we have. That's about as big as they get. So the males are about two inches or, sh or so. The females slightly smaller. Uh, at one point the females were laying eggs on the rocks. I haven't seen that in a little while, so we'll see if that will uh, continue. And next time they do, we'll make sure to pull those eggs and try to get some viable fry. But if we don't pull them, we've got a couple bristle nose in here. They take care of them in pretty short business. So we're gonna have to do a better job of pulling, pulling eggs so we can get the fry. But nice fish, very shy for the most part. Again, you can see the male right there. And then as we come over here, there's a female underneath what I think is a sword plant there on the right, but this fish looked much, much nicer when we had it on lighter substrate. Once we put it on the black substrate, it really darkened up. Uh, so I would recommend if you ever keep Nanakara Anomala, get a lighter substrate. Oh, there's a female right there. In fact, she's got breeding color. So somewhere in that tank, there are some eggs that probably are it's probably stuck to that rock back there. So that's something we're gonna have to check out. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the 50 gallon low boy. We'll also take a look at the 20s down there. So this is a 20 high right across from the Bristol Nose breeding tanks. And in this tank, we've got a, some temporary inhabitants. And that would be these Severums that we got. They were labeled gold red Severums at a recent green water auction. We have five of them. There's two there. Well, there's another one over there. There's another one. And there's one probably hiding somewhere. So these fish are going to need a much larger tank than this. They will get it. I think what we're going to wind up doing is combining these Severum with the Geophagus wine milleri, put them in a six foot 125, possibly a 150. And I think that would be a really cool looking display tank. Uh, other fish we have in here, we've got some lizard tail L10A plecos, which are nowhere to be found. But then we've got some smaller fish over here. So we've got some pygmy cats. And there are also some Heteriandria formosa. Uh, these are the Florida least killifish. And they are very difficult to see, but there is one over here. And then of course we have another one over there. And then mixed in, uh, we can see the pygmy quarries as well. Uh, those fish I would highly recommend if you're going to do Florida least killifish, probably best off in like a 10 gallon with some lighter substrate because they get lost easily in a tank that's larger than a 10 gallon. I mean, we've got at least six to eight, if not more in here, and they're impossible to find. So a smaller tank would probably be better for them if you're trying to enjoy them. Right next door, we have what I like to call the guppy party tank. Uh, this thing is awesome. It's so much fun to watch. Obviously, there are a lot of babies in here. We enjoy this tank quite a bit, and this is one of those tanks where every once in a while, we'll scoop a couple nets out of the guppies from the guppy party tank and bring them to swaps and auctions and let other people enjoy them as well. But this has been a great tank, very, very productive for us. As you can see, it's also a tank where we, you know, we grow some plants, some hornworts, some jungle val, there's some Anubias floating in there. So uh, lots of plants, lots of guppies, lots of fun. So this is our Neolampralagus multifasciatus tank. This is an awesome tank. It's a 50 gallon low boy. We started with about nine or 12 Maltese and now we are up to uh, There's at least a hundred in here and there's we've sold a lot of them uh, We've brought a lot to swaps and auctions. It's a great tank to watch These are little fish with a big attitude, but not overly aggressive. They don't eat their fry, which is 
pretty darn cool. And it's really cool because every once in a while you'll see little pockets of babies kind of springing up all over the place. Uh, it's, it's a great tank. I mean, this is a tank that we will probably have in our fish room uh, for as long as, as we have the fish room. It's just, it's really cool, really fun to watch. And one thing I figured I would show you in the multi-tank is the fact that we are also apparently now breeding bristlenose. So we've got a couple bristlenose plecos in this tank and there's a whole bunch of them right at the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the 640 breeders that we have along the back wall. All right, so here we have our electric blue Acara and a 40 gallon breeder. We've got a large sword plant in here. And then we've got all these roots that you see are from the pothos above the tank. This is a great, great tank for us. Again, it's a tank that I really like to look at. Uh, the electric blue Acara are a fairly peaceful South American cichlids. As you can see, we've got about eight of them in here or so. No problems, no fin nipping, no real aggression, no breeding yet, unfortunately, but we're hoping at some point we will start to see that. But super cool fish, really, really like them. Uh, just a lot of color. And the nice thing is, unlike the electric blue jack Dempsey's, these guys tend to breed uh, true, which is pretty cool. This is another cool fish. This is Cypochromus leptosoma. Uh, these guys, we have them in a 40 gallon breeder here. And what's cool about them is we started with about I think six or eight, and now we've got quite a few in here, certainly over 20 or 25. Uh, the females, they have relatively small batches of fry. They are mouth breeding cichlids. They'll usually release three to four every couple of months or so, each the female. Males are blue with the yellow tails. The females are more silver. We have a species profile on these fish. You want to check them out. Uh, definitely a cool fish, relatively peaceful. There are some Neil Amprologus brevis shell dwellers in here as well. A couple bristlenose plecos, and I even think we've got a couple quarry cats in here somewhere. This is another tank that I really like. This is another 40 gallon breeder that we have right next to the Cypochroma leptosoma, and these are the Pseudotrophius solosi. Uh, you can see here we've got a female. Uh, both of these females are holding fry, and they are the yellow ones, and then the males are the blue with the dark blue stripes. Uh, that's what's so cool about these fish. They are in Buna. They are not super aggressive in Buna, which are pretty cool. Uh, they stay relatively small, so this is about as big as they're going to get. And even though our ratios are kind of messed up, we'd actually probably want to have two males and four females. Here we've got four males and two females. Even though those ratios aren't the best, they're still relatively peaceful. Again, not a lot of fin nipping. Nobody's hiding in a corner. There's the dominant male right there. You can see he's a little bit darker, darker fins, darker stripes. Uh, the the subdominant males are gonna be a little bit more washed out, but this is a cool fish. We recently got some fry from them. And again, we've got two more females here holding, which is cool, but this is a great fish. One of our favorite imbunas. So this 40 gallon breeder has got a couple things going on. Uh, actually, three things. One, you're going to see an enormous number of brown bristlenose plecos. Uh, this turned into a bristlenose pleco breeding tank, not really because we tried, just because we had a few adults in here and they decided to have lots of babies. And so we've probably got at least 100 in here. The other thing that you'll see is lots of snails. We don't mind snails in our fish room. Uh, we can take these snails out and we can feed them to fish that really enjoy them. And then, of course, probably the most obvious is we've got these Metroclima Grishakei albinos. Pretty cool fish. So you can see the male is right there on the left. He's, he's very light in color with the more orange dorsal fins. And then there are three females over here. And they are more monochromatic, I suppose, uh, where you can see that they are mostly orange. But he is showing off to that female right now as we speak. There is another male in here. He's probably hiding out because this guy is kind of the boss of the tank. And we've had females holding in here. I just haven't had a chance to pull the eggs or put them uh, in their own tank so that they can spit out the fry. That is definitely something that we intend to do. That's why they are in the tank. But I really, really, really like this male. I just think he's a cool fish. A nice contrast between the white and the more yellow or orange dorsal fins. I think after we breed them, he's gonna probably wind up in our Imbuna cichlid community tank. And we might go ahead and get the other group, the other male and these three females and get them off to somebody else who would like to breed them as well. This is another 40 gallon breeder. This is a great tank. We love this tank a lot. This is 
a tank for our star sapphire cichlids. We have four males in here along with two females. So again, our, our ratios are a little messed up. Usually you want the exact opposite, but this is a really great tank. These fish are getting larger. They're gonna move into a larger tank at some point. I think we might move them into a 75 gallon. Uh, the males are finally starting to get their white spots. They will look like a starry night sky as the name implies, star sapphire. But these are wonderful fish. Again, relatively peaceful for, a, for an African cichlid. The ratio right now is working out just fine uh, with the four males and two females. And we've had the females holding in this tank as well. Uh, not currently, and we're hoping to get some fry from them pretty soon but this is another tank that we definitely enjoy watching. Uh, fish that are, are just, they're, they're really, really cool. This is the last of our 40 gallon breeders along the back wall. And we've got a few fish in here. We've got our, our calvis. We've got some ephemeral tilapia ventralis powder blues. And we've got a shell dweller, Neolamprologus meliagris are all in this tank. Uh, they are very shy actually. And this is a tank where I think we're gonna actually wind up putting some guppies in this tank. And the reason for that really is twofold. One, to bring these fish out a little bit more. And the second reason is we've got a little bit of a green hair algae issue going on here. And we've had really good luck with our guppies kind of taking care of that. So that is a possibility, but they're, it's a pretty shy tank. Uh, they've, they've, been, they've been getting along just fine, but I think at some point, we may have to think about what we want to do with the calvus because if the meliagris are having babies and there's been a couple times where the females have clearly been guarding shells, we're going to have to figure that out because we don't want the calvus eating meliagris babies. And here we can see them starting to pop up from the back over there. We can see a pair in the back by the sponge filter. But uh, Jungle Bell, we're just kind of letting it go a little bit crazy right now. It's filled in throughout the entire bottom of the tank, kind of did it on its own. We don't really make a big effort to fertilize the, this tank, at least with root tabs and very little liquid fertilizers, but the Jungle Bell is growing. Kind of happy with that. We're gonna leave it that way, but that is our one of our Lake Tanganyikan tanks. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the 75s now. So this is the 75 gallon Imbuna tank. These fish get a bad rap uh, because of their aggression, but when you can learn to manage the aggression correctly, you wind up with something that looks like this, and in my opinion, it is really, really worth it. Uh, the colors on these fish will rival just about any freshwater tropical fish, and it's, it's really, really an enjoyable tank to watch. Uh, you can see here the aggression is not too bad. We don't have anybody like, you know, beat up or sitting in a corner somewhere. somewhere. Uh, we've got yellow labs in here. We've got Metroclima elongatus, Johannes, Kenii, Pseudotropius acei. We've got a bumblebee cichlid in here. We've got some blue dolphin cichlids. Uh, you know, just a, a number of, of really nice fish, red zebras. And like I said, they're all getting along relatively well. Yes, are they gonna kind of chase each other around a little bit? For sure, but nothing super aggressive. Nobody's dying, nobody's getting uh, completely annihilated in this tank. And once you learn to manage this aggression, this can be one of the most rewarding groups of fish that you could possibly have just due to the color personality. When you feed these fish, it's always like they've never eaten a day in their life and they absolutely just go nuts for fish food. You can actually see this red zebra OB right here in the center. She's holding fry. Uh, those fry probably came from the male red zebra. This other red zebra up here, she's also holding. She's got a mouthful of eggs or fry. And again, so our male red zebra, he's a busy guy, uh, but we get lots of fry from this tank. We always have to pull the females, otherwise uh, the fry will be missing, but once we notice a, a, a fish is holding, we pull them pretty fast. We've had absolutely no issues with hybridization. The fish kind of stay to their own when it comes to breeding, but love this tank. Absolutely one of our favorites in the fish room. So this is the lower 75, and we've got a couple things going on here. We have our red empress, and we've got three males here. And we can see here the, the big male right here. And for a long time, he was the only male that was breeding in this tank. And we also have all these dragon bloods. And there is one male dragon blood. He's the one that's a little bit more pink. So I mentioned before that we had that 10 gallon filled with dragon blood red empress mixes. It was that male along with all these female dragon bloods that gave us those mixes and they give us 
Some dragon blood fish, which are pretty cool, but they also give us some really, really interesting looking OBs, which I will show you when we get to the 125. Uh, but this, is, this has been an incredibly productive tank for us. As you can see here, we've got red empress that are holding, we've got dragon bloods that are holding, and last time we got a batch of red empress fry, they gave us about 50 or so. So we've got them growing up in a fry bin. Uh, and then of course these dragon bloods every time they give us a batch of fry they're good for about 40 as well so they are easy to breed and they give you a lot of fry now this tank is not going to win any aquascaping awards it's really just set up as a, a peacock mixed peacock uh, breeding tank and so that's kind of its purpose and we, i'm not necessarily sure it's going to stay this way the star sapphires that i talked about earlier they may wind up in this tank and we may move these breeding groups out of the fish room and to somebody else, but we have to make sure that we can still get the OBs because the OBs are absolutely fantastic looking fish. Uh, in my opinion, probably my favorite out of the, the ones that we're talking about here. And like I said, I'll show you those OBs in a moment. Okay, so we can go ahead and take a look at the 220s now that we've looked at the 75s. So these are some cool fish. These are Hero Tilapia Multispinosa and they are going to stay relatively small and we do like some of the smaller central and south americans like the sahikas the nanoluteus the nanacara uh, these are all cool fish and this is another one and they're still young so they haven't reached full color and what's interesting is this was a setup when we got these fish i just threw this 20 gallon together super super quick I, it was a tank that was housing some Julichromus transcriptus so there were some shells in here and I, I just threw this together through some jungle bell, through some rocks in here. And amazingly enough, this little simple setup is one of my favorites. So these fish are super cool as well. I think there's about nine of them in here. I've also got a super red bristle nose in there as well. Clearly they eat snails because there used to be snails in this tank. And now all we see along the bottom are snail shells. Uh, so nice fish. The colors are really cool, especially when they get into uh, breeding behavior. So that's something that when that happens, I will be sure to kind of check back. But right now it's just kind of a subtle beauty. They've got a little bit of a yellow color and they're gonna get more of that as they get older. These fish are still relatively young. And in fact, when we got them, they were maybe uh, three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch or so. Uh, so they were pretty tiny and now they're, they're starting to get their color, which is pretty interesting. But cool fish, a tank that we really enjoy. So the inhabitants of this tank win the award sometimes for some of the shyest fish that we have in the fish room. And it's, it's just kind of interesting. This, these are some white labs. There's a rusty cichlid in here as well. There's some babies. So if you look really close to the rocks, there's some babies. And here's a baby that doesn't really know he's supposed to be shy. And I think what's going on, and so I'm gonna have to be really careful here. That rusty cichlid, I'm pretty sure is a male. And I think that he has been hybridizing with the white labs. So anything that comes out of here, we're gonna treat as a mixed African cichlid because some of them look like white labs and others, they've got hints of more purple. So I'm kind of interested to see what happens here with these, but this is certainly not something, you know, that we're gonna be passing off to people. And that also means these white labs and the rusty are gonna to have to be separated if we wanna be breeding white lab cichlids, which we will do. But at the same time, you know, the hybrids, I, I know there are a lot of people who say the hybrids are, are terrible and they should never be created. I'm of the opinion that if you are, have hybrids and they look awesome and everybody knows they're a hybrid and we're not trying to breed them and get them all out and mix with other fish to the point where we don't have the wild types anymore, I, I don't see a problem with some of the hybrids as long as we're we're responsible with what we're doing. But these fish clearly, they don't really look like purebred white labs, but it's it's a cool fish. I mean, these, these guys are really pretty when they're out and about. They've got a nice blue iridescence to them on top of the silvery white color. So I think what we're gonna wind up doing with this tank is possibly putting in some dither fish, maybe some guppy. We had some guppies in here and I took them out, but we're gonna have to put some more guppies in here, I think, or put them back in here so that these guys are not constantly hiding under the rocks. So this is the 125, it's a six foot 125. This tank is very different compared to what I had planned when I originally set it up. Originally it was going to be for three Oscars and they had a little buddy, a jewel cichlid and maybe a couple bristlenose plecos to keep the glass clean. As you can see, that didn't quite happen the way uh, I had intended. 
So we're gonna go ahead and get a closer view here and I'll tell you more about what's going on. All right, so what happened? Well, thing number one is <laughs> we've got a very large Nile tilapia in this tank, Oreochromus niloticus. It is a really cool fish. I bought nine of these things at a swap and I, I bought them because no one was bidding on them. They, were, you know, they went for a dollar, I think, for a bag of nine. And I sold the rest of them at an auction. I kept one just to see what would happen and this is what happened. So this is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a 14 inch Nile tilapia right now. It is an absolutely fantastic fish and with a couple of Oscars. Uh, very, very peaceful. As you can see, the colors are quite amazing, I think. Uh, they're not you know super, super bright, but boy, you get this guy under the right light and he looks phenomenal. Uh, a gentle fish, a gentle giant for sure. I have found our Oscars to be the same. They really don't fight with one another. Uh, the tank for the most part is a relatively peaceful tank. So that was thing number one. Uh, we have plans to add some fairly large tanks in the basement. I think those two Oscar and the tilapia are gonna move to a larger tank because this 125 is, uh, they're, they're outgrowing it obviously. So we're gonna have to move them to something larger. So what happened with the rest of the fish? Well, that red empress that you see right there, he was in the 75 I just showed you and he was a subdominant male and for whatever reason he was getting beat on pretty hard at the time this was the only tank i thought he would be able to go into and not get picked on and it worked out fine he recuperated he's just kind of hanging out in this tank now great looking fish and then we have the story of these what i think are very beautiful ob's uh, these were fish that I put in this tank, uh, they were actually a mix between Dragon Bloods and Red Empress that came out of the, the 75. And I sold all the Dragon Bloods and I was left with what were little tiny gray fish. And I didn't know if anybody was really gonna want them. So uh, I put them in this tank and they were quite small and they survived. And they turned into these fantastic OBs, which I think are just gorgeous. And now we've got a few nicely colored males in here. Now here's the crazy thing. Look at the size of some of these fish. There are actually about 20 or so very, you know, small juveniles in here and they are pretty much left alone. You would think that the Oscars and the Nile tilapia would go ahead and uh, eat these guys and for the most part they leave them alone because they are so well fed. These fish grow up in here. I've pulled fry out of here before and brought them to swaps and auctions and it's actually turned into one of our more productive breeding tanks and you would never think of all the fish tanks we have in the fish room that this tank would produce a lot of fry but it does. Uh, that Geophagus uh, Steindacteri, I separated him from a female because they were having babies like every 30 days and that was not healthy for the female so he wound up in here as well. Uh, he will probably move back. I have a female in the 75 on the other side I think and so maybe at some point I will put them back together. Uh, the less colorful fit, uh, OBs are the females. They're constantly holding, constantly spitting out fry. Uh, this is definitely, of all the tanks in the fish room, one of my absolute favorite tanks to look at. Uh, you would think that it would just be super stressful and all the fish would be killing each other and eating each other and tearing each other apart. And that is obviously not the case. You don't see a whole lot of fin damage. That OB right there has kind of taken over in the tank. They're still kind of figuring out who's the boss, though, two of them. So uh, every once in a while, they'll, they'll kind of spar a little bit. Uh, over here, you'll see that the Geophagus Steindacter, right? he's kind of finding his own spot. And so uh, he's got a couple bite marks in his tail. I, I might move him out to a different tank. But for the most part, other than that, these fish really, really get along well. A lot of fun to watch. The Oscars are very, very mellow. This Nile tilapia, even though he is absolutely ginormous, he is a really cool fish just to watch. He's, he, like I said, it's just crazy how fish these, this large, you know, a 14 inch Nile tilapia, and then we've got these two Oscars, which are about 10 inches, maybe 11 and we get all these fry that survive in here and it's, it's just a pretty cool thing. So this is the 125, again, of all the fish tanks in the fish room, certainly one of my favorites to watch. So this is a 10 gallon setup in the boys' little reptile zone area and it's a quarantine tank for these guppies and we featured these guppies not too long ago. Uh, really cool guppy, they are the top sword guppies and like them a lot, they're already breeding, there's babies up there at the top which is pretty cool. 
Uh, we will turn this tank into something more later, but we needed to get some Java moss and we needed to get the hornwort in there to just to kind of protect the babies that were being produced. Uh, we'll definitely give you updates as we set up a more permanent tank for these guys, as the males color up a little bit more, but they seem to be doing well, seem to be breeding pretty happy. All right, everybody, so that was part one of the fish room tour. In the next video, we'll take a look at the other side. So if you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.